Uh, good morning to everyone. It's uh, really a great privilege uh, to uh, share God's word. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor and uh, Lord. And uh, it is our hope and prayer that uh, we will be able to get a call for salvation for those who will attend, accept it the Lord Jesus Christ towards the end of the message and for renewed service for those of us who have already accepted our Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, last Sunday when uh, Pastor told me that uh, I have to speak this Sunday, I readily accepted knowing that the Lord will see me through. I say this with confidence from God because I have, by God's grace, uh, many years of Bible study in my family, in my court, and also in uh, other places. And it is our open prayer that uh, the Lord can still use me. So the pain that's with standing, that is a small price to pay. When we were talking with the Pastor Nasita about the message, a thought came to my mind about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I had this in mind, taking in to account two verses, the uh, two key uh, series of verses. The first one being John 3 verse 16, which is, which is the heart of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a place in many Bibles, even all over the world. You can see that this is a very, very famous verse. Uh, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And another key set of verses would be our scripture reading a while ago, and that is Second Thessalonians chapter one, verses seven to nine. And uh, this is so because in verse seven and we talk of that part regarding the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and in verse 8 in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and verse 9 who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the power of His glory. So we, here in this key verses we can see the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is mentioned very, very clearly. And it is our hope that we can achieve this by going through uh, specific verses from Genesis up to Revelation so we can more or less revisit or for those who may not have heard it in uh, this light probably we can make an informed decision through the Holy Spirit to accept our Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior not only to our salvation but Toward, towards everlasting life. Now, we have an introduction, and uh, this is a lengthy one. The first one is Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. It talks about the godly man. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the scene of this 
sin of this world fully. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. The context in which Psalms was written was at a time when we do not have the Holy Bible in printed form like this. The law of the Lord mentioned there is the versions that are faithfully sent to it by the Lord our God to be given from generation to generation as a correct recording of his word, which is the Bible, which became printed several centuries ago only. So we see here, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate at night. So we must love reading the Bible, because after all, the Bible is the word of God. For in 2 Timothy verses, uh, uh, chapter 3, verses uh, 16 and 17, it's mentioned that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, meaning the Holy Spirit gives our Bible and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And in verse 17, that the man of God may be made perfect totally for this and to all good works. So the Bible is clearly, the, the, uh, the, uh, the author of the Bible is God, the Holy Spirit who moved the writers of this godly men of that from Moses up to John and they wrote the books of the Bible and it's mentioned here that in these verses we just read that the word of God, the Bible is good for us, it is profitable for us for doctrine, when we talk of doctrine it is for sound doctrine that's not of any other way because there are some people who use the Bible for unsound doctrines. They use it in the wrong way. Like for instance, there are verses in the Bible that talks about, like for instance, about these things, they misinterpret it to mean that this is contrary to other parts of the Bible, when actually that is not what is meant in the, uh, those passages. So doctrine, for reproof, for correction. These are two almost synonymous terms. But uh, this means to say we, there may be things that we do as Christians, but when we read the Bible, we are convicted that this is not the right way to do things, because this is not godly. And we correct our ways. And for instruction in righteousness, that simply means to say that the Lord God makes sure that the Bible contains everything we need for us to have that right relationship with God again. And then in the last verse we read, it is for uh, making a, a, a good Christian life for each and every one of us. Because after all, after we have that right relationship with God through Jesus Christ alone, as we will take up later, it means to say that we good works will come forth out of this relationship. It cannot be that good works will bring us salvation or right relationship with God. Because there are many, many religions all over the world that emphasizes good deeds, but they never believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They never teach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because 
they are more on different uh, books, not the Bible. So this is one of the, the things that we have to consider, that the Bible is the Word of God. And then, of course, as further proof, we can see that God declares that He is the Creator of heaven and earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it talks about in, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is a very, very clear statement and declaration from God. That He created everything. Because in the next verses, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, up to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, up to Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, rather, it speaks about creation. As Christians, we must believe every word that is stated in our Bible. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 2, up to Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 2, and we will not read this, we will just summarize this. The Lord God created everything, he created light and darkness, the first day, then after that, the subsequent days, he created the uh, uh, the heaven, the earth, the, all living things on earth, and then he created also the the, the, the winds, the fowls, the, the, the living things in the oceans, in the rivers, the seas, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and then on the sixth day, our Lord God created man. And we know the story of the creation of man and the, the woman being taken from the ribs. That's something we should believe. Because after all, this, the Bible is the word of God. And we can see on the seventh day, our Lord God rested. That's, this, uh, that's why this is something that we should also take as a, a reproving verse for people who do not rest. They keep on working. They keep on working seven days a week. They have to rest. That's why pastor is resting. He's smiling now because he, at least he, can, he should also rest. Uh, everyone needs rest. I also rest because if I don't rest, probably I get sick. There can be sickness unto death for disobeying the word of God. So this is uh, this how our God is so all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's all knowing all the characteristics of the divine nature of God is stated in the Bible, no less illustrated by the fact that we are all created beings of God. Now, let's go back to what is meant the religio. Religio. Religio in our uh, PowerPoint means that we have to have that right relationship of God uh, with God. Because later on we discuss why we have that sinful relationship uh, with God without our Lord Jesus Christ. Re means again, legio is to tie again. So religion, the true religion is based on our Lord Jesus Christ alone. It cannot be based on any teaching that if you are not a member of the Baptist Church, you will not go to heaven. If you are not a member of this group and group, you will not go to heaven. That's a difficult. But uh, this we will learn later on. 
So that's religio. And then, of course, we have um, uh, as a as a important as an important introduction, we must speak about man because in First Thessalonians 5 verse 23 it speaks of and the very God of peace sanctify you holy I pray God your holy spirit soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ I would like to emphasize the three things mentioned in this verse body soul and spirit but we will be talking more about soul because it's the soul the soul that seen it we will later think at this cannot go to heaven cannot have everlasting life if you not, do not believe in the lord jesus christ and then of course God is revealed also in three persons. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, it talks about there is one God. I want to emphasize that. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. And then, of course, you go to the other verses there, like uh, in uh, Matthew, 20, Matthew 28. 18 to 20, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to all uh, here. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of God. He did not say name of God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's equivalent to God. Because after all, the three persons of the Holy Trinity or God are, uh, number one, God the Father, that's our Lord God in heaven, our Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost, or, or the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of the Son, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Son of God, these are the things that are mentioned here. So, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the world, uh, end of the world. Amen. That's the complete uh, text of uh, Matthew chapter, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. But what one verse that really talks of the Godship of our Lord Jesus Christ and his biblical authority to speak uh, as God is the declaration that he made in John 10 verse 30 and this is I and the Father are one very 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 clear words the Lord Jesus Christ, whom many say is not God. There are many religions all over the world that say he's not God. But this verse is a very clear indication that God, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ, who, uh, who came in flesh, is God himself. There was I and the Father, that's the God the Father, are one. So with this introduction that we have, let's now go to why man has that uh, uh, relation that is not right with God. This is because of the presence of sin. In Gen Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, and I will not go all over this, except for the fact that here we can see that um, there was one command of the Lord Jesus Christ to Adam and Eve, and the first uh, 
man and woman created by God in the Garden of Eden. There was only one command, for them not to eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, which uh, in other verses is described as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the only command that the Lord uh, God gave them. Because in verse 3 it says, Ye shall eat of it, thou, thou shalt not eat of it, lest ye die. So it's a very, uh, very simp uh, simple. There was only one command. And Adam and Eve were provided by our Lord God with everything that they need in the Garden of Eden. But only that they have to live by the command of God, not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the uh, knowledge, of, uh, knowledge of good and evil. But they disobeyed God. Why? Because the serpent is there. The serpent is the devil. That's also another uh, uh, name given by the Bible to the serpent. He beguiled Eve at first to eat of the uh, fruit of the forbidden tree. He said that you will not die. You shall not surely die. You will be like God. That is the the the, the, the sinfulness of the the, uh, the serpent. And what did the uh, uh, do? She was tempted to disobey God. She ate of the fruit and gave it to Adam, and Adam also ate. So what happened? There is that broken relationship between God and man. Of course, in Genesis 3, verse 16, it talks about the prophetic verse that the Lord Jesus Christ will be the Savior, in verse 16, but we not go into that anymore. And so, what happened there was, because of this broken relationship, God drove out Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Eden. So, this is the situation where we find ourselves in if we do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have that sinful nature because after all, in Romans 3 verse 23, it uh, says then that for all have sinned and fall come short of the glory of God. So we can see here that everyone is sin. And uh, in Romans 5 verse 12, it uh, says there, Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, for, so death passed upon all men, and so, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, that is the thing that is mentioned in Romans 5 verse 12. That means to say that because of the sin committed by Adam, all of us sin, and we have to follow God in how we have to cure this so that we can follow God's way to everlasting life and to have that right relationship with God. So that is mentioned in uh, Romans 5 verse 12 and in uh, Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we can see in the, here, it's uh, in this verse that sin causes death. But 
the Lord God mentions, mentions in this verse that the gift of God is etern uh, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's mentioned here. The only way we can have that right relationship with God, remedying the sinful nature that we have because of the sin of Adam and, and Eve, is through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the word there is gift. We know for a fact that when one re uh, receives a gift, you do not have to do anything. All you have to do is to accept the gift. By grace, it's free, and you can have everlasting life. But of course, we'll go on to that in the other verses because uh, we, let, we have to think of the other verses also in connection with this. So, we can now see that uh, in... Uh, let's talk about the sinful nature of man. The Lord Jesus Christ talks about the sinful nature of man. Because in Mark 7, verses 21 to 23, it talks about this. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, nagkakasala ka sa pag-iisip pa lang, masama ng pag-iisip mo sa kapwa mo, kung gano'n, that's so evil thoughts. So, you want to curse uh, somebody, even to your thoughts only, that's already an evil thought. You, you say something, that's, uh, may, that may be considered an evil thought. So evil thoughts, adulteries, we know that, fornication, murders, murders like the case of Cain and Abel in uh, Genesis, we can see that Cain and Abel were the, the first children of Adam and Eve. And Cain, the first uh, born son of this, killed his brother Abel. Just imagine a brother killing his brother. That's, that's, that's murderous. Because that's because of the sinful nature of man. And then you have thefts, covetousness, pagnanakaw, maraming pagnanakaw po tayo nakikita sa buong mundo. No? I was listening to CNN, but of course they, they are not a Christian nation. There's too much uh, uh, unrest in uh, Iran because of uh, allegedly one of their uh, plates is uh, corruption that uh, came in uh, just uh, a, a few uh, few days ago. They, they've been on unrest for three days already. And in many, many parts of the world, when there is drug and corruption, that's death also. You, you steal money from the government. You steal money from other people, that's death. Covetousness. You know that? Uh, just the big fact that you covet things that are not yours, that's already seen. Then you have wickedness. In wickedness, it's uh, something that lahat uh, ng klase ng kasamaan, so uh, wickedness. Deceit, paglilin lang. You want to get money from somebody without uh, thinking of repaying it. That's a deceit. No, many kinds of deceit. Minsan, naisip ko rin. Eh, nagkakasala rin ako sa mga ganyan-ganyan. No? So, lalo na sa police test. No? So, you, you can see deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride. Ayan, yeah, pride. Marami. Kung yung naisip ko ngayon yung uh, message ito, I convicted myself because uh, there are many things that are uh, wicked. Foolishness, you know, when I was a child, I do foolish things. You know? 
And up to now, there are foolish things I do. So that's why we have to pray to God always to correct our ways. No? As a, a Christian, people should have pray, prayerful lives. But here, in Mark 7, verses 21 to 23, our Lord Jesus says in verse 23, All these evil things come from within and defile the man. No? So, ito ang spiritual condition ng tao. That's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ because after all, we have to make sure that we have to follow the Bible. So therefore, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, it speaks of, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So itong situation natin, we need God's way to find our way to have that right relationship with God. We mentioned the Holy God, it's the gift of God to eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. But the Bible talks of the fact that when you become a Christian, you have to be a new creature. All things are passed away. Lat lat na magal gawain hindi magaganda, masasama dapat isang tabi na at dapat completely you should do this to do away with this wicked ways, and you become a new creature, a new creature for God. How do you do this? You realize how sinful you are. You realize that you cannot do anything without God's prescription or God's way or without following God. And you ask for forgiveness to God. And what does the Lord God do? He will cleanse you from all this uh, evil things you did in the past and then you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and what does the Lord God do? You will become a new creature and a new creature which our Lord God can use for His glory. So, we go to the heart of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, binigay niya. Ang greatest gift in all history, ano For God to give God the Son to die on the cross so that your sins my sins and all our sins can be forgiven. That God, the Son, dying on the cross instead of us dying ourselves. So this is the meaning of this for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him marami nagsasabi pa rin na Pag hindi ka pinili ng Panginoong Diyos, hindi ka pupunta sa langit. That's why there are some churches and so-called evangelical churches or Christian churches, hindi sila nag-preach ng gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ because to them, if the Lord God does not choose you, you will not be saved. But God gave us the freedom of choice. Why do we say this? In John 3.16, the heart of the Gospel, it talks about whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the problem sometimes. If you are so brilliant, you think you can use logical thinking to try to misinterpret this verse, you will go nowhere. Because this is 
salvation already, you do not talk of other verses to make use of it, to show that the Lord did not give us the freedom of choice. Because in verse 17, the Lord God himself says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn that the world, but that the world may be saved. So you can see here the great love of God for each and every one of us. So God is love here, So we can see here, and what is the benefit of this? The great reward, the greatest reward we'll have, everlasting life. Because in uh, if you want to have a clearer picture of this, we can look into John 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. So, we can see here, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as we had mentioned a while ago, by realizing your sinful condition, asking the Lord God for forgiveness, the Lord will forgive you. After you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, that's the meaning of that. He that believeth the Son had everlasting life. Napaka-klaro na you do not have to have logic, logical thinking, yes. You are talking already of specific uh, verses here. You do not use passages of parables or things like that to show a different result. Because this is the clearest way our Lord God wants us to understand this passage. And no less than the Lord Jesus, if you have your red letter Bibles with you, you'll see that these are red letters. These are direct words from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And in John 3 verse 36, I would like to invite your attention to the last page there. And he that believeth not the Son, yung hindi a believer, not a Christian, shall not see life. Bakit not see life? He will only see death. Death. That is the, for the wages of sin is death. Kamatayan lang magigita niya. And what is the other thing here in this uh, last portion of this verse? The wrath of God, God, abided in Him. Ang puot ng Panginoong Diyos ay nasa Kanya. That's why our Lord God is a God of love. He gave our Lord Jesus Christ so that we can have everlasting life with Him in heaven. But He also uh, gave the consequence of not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are two paths. You do not, you will not see life. In fact, God is a God of justice. That's one thing that many people miss. That's why in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, and I would like to invite your attention to the last phrase of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. In these verses, we spoke about one thing is clear. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ stands out. 
You do not obey this, you will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the power of His glory. So uh, that's, uh, we will take this up much later regarding the destinies of man. But we can see here the results or consequences of not believing God's word and not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the next verse we have, Galatians 4 verse 6, we want to pursue the, the fact that you for a Christian, once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as we discussed earlier, God sent for the Spirit of His Son, that means to say the Holy Spirit, no? into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. That's the closest relationship we can have with God. We have a very close relationship with God the moment we become, become try, uh, Christians. There is power in being Christians, contrary to what many would say, you know, because that's one thing I always think. Every time I have pains, I have problems, there's power in being a Christian. You pray to God. You pray to God that your pains will disappear, even just for the delivery of the message of the Lord God in my part, on my part. And probably on your part, you must have experienced the same thing. If you really realize that there is power in being a Christian, as soon as we can have great rewards, do not li live lives like your defeated Christians. Kaya ako, umingiti ako dito. Pag nagsalita na ako, kasi alam ko na, mawawala ko yung pain, you know, as the pastor said. Pagbalik, masakit na naman. I really realize ko, oh, the things that I have to do, no? or the glory of God. So, these are the things that we must consider in Galatians 4, verse 6. That, uh, this is a very powerful verse. Because we become the sons of God. The Holy Spirit invests us, and then what happens the moment the Holy Spirit invests us? Magkakabungayan, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and uh, faith meekness and temperance, temperance against such there is no law. Imagine if we have all these things, after all, our Lord God says, yan ang bunga, that is the fruit of your being a Christ, uh, living uh, a Christian life guided by the Holy Spirit. Ganda, no? Ano po? Lahat? Joy ang gagandang na sa uh, promise, promise things to us. Love. Love your neighbors. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus says, love your enemies. Kaya ba natin gawin yan? Kaya po natin yan. By God's grace. Di po ba? Kasi marami yan. Love your enemies. Nawawala na yung buong araw nila may isip na nila yung makaaway nila. But that's not the teaching of our Lord God. The teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them that persecute you. Gawan ka ng masama. Gawan mo ng mabuti. Do we do that? Ako, it's not, hindi ko nagagawa yan. That's why, after a while, I realized to read Malik. So, as the Bible says, the Bible is there. It's nice to meditate on this, uh, on the Bible's uh, verses day and night. It's good if you can memorize it, 
by God's grace, it's only grace of God that you can memorize it. Because when you read the aids of Pastor Sarla, it's nice to have those memories of the Bible verses. It becomes a compass to your life. You do not have to be burdened with reading the Bible that may be written is small prints. Maybe the giant prints become small already when you're already out there. I don't see. Kita po yung malalaking prints. Parang mabilit eh. When you're not growing anymore, any younger. But that's the beauty of life. After all, our Lord God says, you should have love, you should have joy. Joy in everything. Di po ba? Do we have that kind of joy in our lives? Right now, we have problems. We must live a life with joy. Because after all, this is the reward of a godly life. Maraming bagay-bagay, we must be very, very blessed. Sabi ni Pastor, blessed talaga kung we do not live in a world where Christians are persecuted. Tama po pa, Pastor, no? In other countries, you cannot have this kind of services. In uh, intolerant societies, you may end up in jail if you have a worship service like this. You read your Bible. And we are blessed because in the Philippines, we have religious freedom. So, those are the things that we should have great joy. And then, of course, in uh, John 14, verse 6, um, and I would like to have as a background John 14, verses 1 to 5, the Lord Jesus here is speaking about uh, in my Father's house are many, many mansions. Actually, the meaning here is uh, there are many rooms. I mean, in, in my father's house are many mansions, rooms. Because eh? uh, we makikita natin the Lord Jesus was uh, was uh, uh, describing uh, heaven, eventually the new heaven, uh, Jerusalem, new heaven. Was talking about this, and then. I prepare a place for you, but Thomas asked him, how can uh, we know the way? You talk about something, a destination, the final destination of Christians. And then Thomas, being one of the disciples, he always asks uh, very good questions. Huh? But the Lord in John 14 verse 6 said, I am the way, the truth and the light. No man cometh unto the Father except through me or back through me. So, it's a very clear declaration that the only way to, our, to God is through our Lord Jesus Christ. There can be no other way. You cannot say, I go to God through Jesus Christ with another person, that's a, that's a biblical. Because after all, if you do that, you're not following God's word. You're disobeying God's word. You're misinterpreting God's word. Because here in this series of verses, John 14 verses 1 to 6, it's very clear that what is being spoken of is heaven. It's being clear that God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, was asked, what's the way? And he said, I am the way. He said, the truth. Itong katotohanan. Because there are many people who preach different things, false things. And the life. Why life? Because life and death. He gives life. The devil gives, gives them. Those are the contrast there. 
And no man can go to God except through our Lord Jesus Christ alone. That's a very, very clear uh, statement. And of course, we can see here that destination of uh, the, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Ito mga uh, wicked people, people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, rather, uh, they go to hell. And in Mark 9, verse 44, it's uh, bent, hell is bent, uh, described them as a place where the worms die not and the fire is not quenched. That's one good reason why I lovingly love the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I hate worms. I don't want to be in a place, eternal place, where there is worms all over. My wife is very clean in the house. But I also hate worms. Oh, oh. Oh How can you live in a place like that? Then uh, I love cool places. Now, if you love a place like uh, there is uh, the fire is not quenched, the gat the gat that could be a very good place for people who do not like uh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. No? So. That's it. You know? So we can see here that uh, in Psalms, and of course in Revelations 20, verses uh, 13 and 14, in relation to Revelations 20, verse 10, it speaks about uh, death and hell being cast into the lake of fire. So the eventual and eternal destiny of people who that do not accept the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is not on the hell but the lake of fire. And in Revelation 20 verse 10, the description of the lake of fire is that it is a place where, where you are tormented day and night forever and ever. Eh, kung yung pain ko nga, I'm praying to God, mawala. I don't want to be in a place where I have, I do not only have pain, but I'm tormented day and night. But, this is the clear description of our Lord God. And this is contrasted to, uh, this is contrasted to Revelations 21 verses 1 to 4 and we will not go to this uh, uh, one by one but let me just summarize the place where we will go by God's grace we will be in the new Jerusalem that's the old heaven shall be pass away and there's going to be the new the, uh, heaven and this is New Jerusalem and this is a place where there will be no more sorrow no more crying no more pain no more death and we shall be God's people and that our Lord God will be our God no? so that's in the way projected now on the screen 21, Revelation 21, verses 1 and 2, and then in the verse 3 and 4, we can see that the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, is a place, as we said earlier, a place where there will be no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain, the pain to mawala. I got stress, no? So, ang ganda naman ng taste talaga. No more death, no? And we shall be God's people. And 
God will be our God. So these are the things that we have to seriously consider as we look forward to the new year. Um, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for those who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I invite you to accept it as I make a, a join in this prayer. And then for the rest of us, we pray for commitment to the Lord God that we can um, serve our Lord God more fruitfully during the coming year and the years to come. So, can I invite each and every one of you as you sit in your uh, seats and you follow through with this uh, prayer and say Amen afterwards. Uh, you can invite the Holy Spirit into your hearts after believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let us pray. You may raise up your hands if you wish. Or you can do it silently as you sit in the, in the pews. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we come before your holy presence as a congregation or as a group gathered in your name. We thank you for the message you have given through your messenger. We thank you for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is our prayer, O Lord, that we accept our sinfulness, we know of our sinful nature, and that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to bring us to everlasting life and to heaven, your dwelling place. We ask for forgiveness for these simple things. We pray that you will uh, forgive us, O Lord. We pray that you will allow us to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. Allow us to become new creatures for your use only of them, for holiness through you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you, O Lord, our God in heaven. We pray, O Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and slowly, Lord, you can give us the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. And we pray, O Lord, that in this regard we be new creatures for you and that you will guide and lead us through the Holy Spirit in living Christ-like lives so that we can always meditate on your word in the Bible and for this to be used in us in our day-to-day -to -day life. We look forward to your promise, O oh Lord, that when we go from this life, we can have everlasting life with you in heaven for all eternity. And we pray, Lord, that for us who have already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we commit our lives unto you for better service, Lord, that we can serve you in the coming year with the uh, hearts renewed uh, life, Lord, so that we can be used for your glory and, and, and alone. We pray that you will continue to guide and lead us, Lord, and make use of us and our families. 
This is our prayer in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the Lord Jesus' name is our prayer. Amen. Thank you very much.